Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about a photosynthetic group of protists which are known as euglenoids. So far we know about, we have discussed about the other two groups of photosynthetic euglenoids which are denoflagellates and chrysophytes. Now this is the third group of photosynthetic protists which are known as euglenoids. So let, let's first discuss about the habits and habitats of this group of euglenoids. So they occur in fresh water. So they are also marine as like that of the chrysophytes. So they occur mostly in fresh water. So and chrysophytes we have talked about that they mostly occur in marine type of environments and damp soils. So they require water for their survival. So presence of water is a characteristic feature so, so that the euglenoids can colonize. They can swim with long flagellum. So they uh, can swim in liquid medium. This is because of the fact that they have very uh, long flagella. So because of this flagella, they can swim in a liquid medium. They can perform creeping type of movement by contraction and expansion. And this type of movement is basically termed as meta body. So what do we mean by contraction and uh, expansion type of movement or creeping movement? We have seen a worm uh, moving, right? So a worm moves by the contraction and relaxation or expansion of its whole body. So this is a type of creeping movement, basically a worm like movement. This is performed by these type of euglenoids and this phenomena or this process of creeping type of movement is known as metabody. Now they are mostly mixotropic in nutrition. So what do we mean by mixotropic in nutrition? They can be holophytic. That means they can prepare their own food from carbon dioxide, water, sunlight in the presence of photosynthetic pigments like chlorophyll. They can also be saprobic or saprophytic. That means they can secrete digestive enzymes outside their body into the food products. The food products are broken down from complex or matters into simpler matters. Now these are now absorbed by the body. So these are known as the saprobic or saprophytic mode of nutrition. So they are mixotropic means they can perform holophytic as well as saprophytic mode of nutrition. They usually store carbohydrates as paramyelin or palamylum bodies. Now let's take a look on the basic structure of these euglenoids. They are mostly unicellular. They are flagellated as we have discussed. So they are unicellular flagellated protists. The cell wall, uh, it, does, it does not have cellulosic uh, contents. So the cell wall is present, but it does not have cellulose in it. The body is covered by flexible pellicle. So it is the outer covering of uh, the body in case of euglenoids, which is known as pellicle and it is basically flexible. It's flexible in structure and because of which it gives a flexible structure to the euglenoids also. And because of this, the euglenoids can uh, perform the creeping type of movement like contraction and uh, expansion of its body structure, which is known as metabody as we have discussed earlier. They have the presence of osmoregulatory contractile vacuole. So very important. What do we mean by osmoregulatory? Osmoregulatory means that these contractile vacuoles, it helps in maintaining the osmotic conditions or concentrations uh, inside the cells of the organism. So as compared to that of the environment. So it helps in osmoregulatory uh, uh, conditions by the help of contractile vacuoles in the anterior part of the cell. So in the anterior part, there are contractile vacuoles, which actually help in osmotic regulation. There is presence of uh, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. So we have discussed that these are photosynthetic type of protists. So they have photosynthetic pigment chlorophyll and they are mostly of two types, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Now they have presence of single large uh, nucleus, which is mostly uh, present in the central area. So in the middle, they have a single large nucleus. Now let us take a look on the uh, type of or mode of reproduction in case of euglenoids. Euglenoids, in euglenoids basically we haven't yet discovered uh, sexual mode of reproduction in euglenoids. So it is yet to be discovered. 
but under favorable conditions they multiply mostly by binary fission which is a asexual mode of reproduction so in this video we have talked about a photosynthetic group of protist which is known as euglenoids we have talked about the basic structure and some of the basic general characteristics of this group which is known as euglenoids so i hope you have understood and like this video thank you